Yeah, what we want to do today is we want to show you how easy bread making can be. I suppose for a lot of us, we've actually kind of almost forgotten actually what bread actually tastes like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how easy bread making can be, and then let's get back to what we're calling real bread. The great thing about this recipe is it's the great all-rounder. It's kind of the foundation. It's the base from where everything comes from. So from a very simple white dough, we can make a little focaccia. We get some pizza bases, some burger buns, or a very simple, beautiful white loaf. But it's very, very simple. We're simply only using some strong white flour, a little bit of salt. We're going to be working with some fresh yeast, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. A little bit of water and some olive oil. Five simple ingredients. As long as you've got a pair of hands and an oven in which to bake it, you're pretty much good to go. 500 grams of strong white flour. And to that, we're adding about 10 grams of sea salt. A little bit of salt heightens the flavor of everything else. Same applies to bread. So always mix your salt through the flour. With this recipe, we're going to be using some fresh yeast. So this is fresh yeast. I don't know if you've ever seen it or ever used it, but don't get too hung up over fresh versus dried. If I was uh, using about 20 grams of fresh, it'd be about seven grams of dried, which is exactly one sachet. So you will get a lot of recipes suggesting that you must dissolve the yeast in the water with a spoonful of sugar. That's an absolute myth. Refined sugar is too complex. Yeast does not need it. Sugar is only added to bread for flavor and for color. The yeast will be perfectly fine without it. Just crumble your yeast straight in. So we're using 10 grams of fresh yeast. So you're probably looking at about half a sachet if you're using dry yeast. So then to that, we're going to be using some water. To be honest, water straight out of your cold tap is absolutely fine. Because all that's going to happen, if it's a little bit colder, it's going to take a little bit longer. The harder the yeast has to work, the more the flavor develops, and the better the dough is for you. What's a little bit different about this dough is we're going to enrich it with a little bit of olive oil. And the idea of the olive oil, it just adds a little bit of fat. It just kind of helps you get that a bit of richness into your dough. So we're adding about 30 mils, but two tablespoons. And then once you've got all your ingredients together, just slowly start bringing everything together. And then once it comes together, we're simply just dumping it straight out onto the table. So most recipes at this stage will say you have to knead your dough, which you do, because at the moment the gluten is formed but it's quite weak, so we build up the strength of our dough by kneading. Most recipes are yes, eight to 10 minutes, most of them are lying, and it puts a lot of people off. Basically, all we're simply gonna do, knead it for about 10 seconds. You will find it a little bit sticky, a little bit messy, but don't absolutely worry. Everyone's reaction at home is to immediately reach for some flour, but avoid the temptation to add from flour. We do not need it. So simply, that's it. That's all we're gonna do. 10 seconds of kneading, straight back in our bowl, is we're gonna leave it for 10 minutes. So by letting it relax, the gluten can relax, starts to develop, and what we're gonna do is we're going to, after 10 minutes, we're gonna come back to it, we're gonna knead it for 10 seconds, we let it rest again, and we do that three times. So basically, it takes 30 seconds of your time. Straight out onto our table once more. And again, we're gonna knead it for another 10 seconds. So all I'm doing, using the heat of my hand, pushing the dough away and hooking it back. You can use one hand, you can use two hands, whatever you like. So simply 10 seconds, that's all we're looking for. So simply pop it back into our bowl and we let the dough rex again for another 10 minutes. And that is our dough done. Basically, we're at the exact same point we would be had we stood here and kneaded our dough for 10, 15 minutes. But by doing this, you can kind of continue on with your life um, and take very, very little effort. Mother Nature's doing all the hard work for you. So if you're ever wondering, have you kneaded your dough sufficiently? The dough will always tell you. So there's a thing called the window pane effect. So the idea is we should be able to stretch the dough till it's virtually see-through. So it should be able to sustain its own weight, but without ripping, without tearing. So you can see that kind of membrane, see the shadows? That's exactly what we're looking for. So if you kind of found that the dough was ripping and tearing, that's just the dough telling you it's not ready yet. But we can see it's holding lovely, no problem whatsoever. So our dough is good to go. Take a little drop of olive oil. Some flour oil will work fine too. Just pop it straight into your bowl. This is basically just stops the dough from sticking. Also, by having a tiny bit of olive oil, you'll find the dough much easier to handle, much easier to manipulate, and you'll find it won't stick into your hands as much. We're going to pop our dough into our bowl and we're going to leave it prove for about an hour. Probably our biggest problem as adults 
is we tend to overthink absolutely everything and we tend to follow recipes religiously. But because bread is affected by variables, by the temperature of the liquid you use, the temperature of your room, if you find that your dough hasn't quite doubled in size, don't be afraid to give it a bit more time. Or if you've used slightly warmer liquids, your kitchen's quite warm and you find that your dough is jumping up, again, just crack on. Once we bring it back after it's proved, you'll find that your dough has doubled in size. So this dough, I, now I've made a little bit extra because I want to show you how versatile and how simple this dough is and how much you can, you're not just confined to one type of bread with it. So what we need to do at this stage is we need to knock our dough back. So by knocking it back, we simply knock all the air from it. We stop that cycle and then we start a new one. Because as bread proves, that's when all the magic happens. It's when the yeast gets to work, it breaks down the natural sugars within the dough produces carbon dioxide and your dough begins to rise. So if you ever want to know the secret to great bread, it's time. You got to give it time. Because the difference in what we do here versus the commercial process, where they're trying to speed everything up, we're trying to slow it right down. So with our little bit of dough, we're going to make a white loaf, a simple white loaf, enriched with a bit of olive oil. We're going to make a little focaccia and we're going to make some, uh, some little burger buns, perfect for the barbecue, perfect for filling those sandwiches, kids going back to school basic grey all-rounder. If you're not used to portioning dough, feel free to use a, a weighing scales. You kind of put all the hard work in so far, so it's kind of nice to get them nice and accurate. When you're doing any little bread rolls, any little bread ones, the idea is the dough kind of sits across your knuckles. So it rolls from here into here. So the secret is really put pressure, push the dough into the table, go big. Pressure on the table, your hand starts to come up, a bit like a claw, go a little bit quicker, you should have a nice little ball. And don't worry if you ever roll them and you find them they're a little bit scraggy, just give them an initial roll. Bring them all together, because you can always come back and give them a second little roll to help tighten them up that little bit more. So about 100 grams is a perfect portion for um, a generous sized burger bun at home, which works absolutely great. So now, for our focaccia. With this one, you can afford to use a little bit more flour because basically we've got to pick the whole thing up off the table. So you all know what the focaccia is, that kind of lovely Italian flatbed. It's characterised by those all little dimples on top. The idea being, as you're shaping it, we're simply just using the pads of our fingers. And we're just walking our fingers through the dough. And by creating those lovely little dimples, when we drizzle on lots of olive oil, they're going to act as pockets. And as the pockets collect the oil, the dough is going to soak it up as it's proving. But as you work your dough, you're going to find the dough naturally wants to shrink. So instead of fighting with the dough, just leave it alone. Give it 20, 30 seconds break, it allows the gluten to relax, and then you have to put in half the amount of effort. So this is kind of a good time to go off and get your toppings, uh, get your bits and pieces ready. So by the time you come back, your dough is relaxed, and we can continue to shape it up. Why we're letting it relax, we're just going to show you how to make a very simple white loaf tin. We kind of start from a lovely round brace. Simply all you do, flip it over, taking both sides, not ripping it, but just stretching them ever so slightly and fold them into the center. Let each one overlap the last. So taking the piece of dough closest to you, you kind of fold it over and just seal it down at the seam. Keep going the same direction and as you fold over, almost tuck it back in on itself. Nice and gentle, you're not ripping your fingers into it. Kind of like you're rolling up kind of a, a towel, getting it really, really tight. A little roll up. And then we have a perfect little parcel. So we've got a little loaf tin. Very little dust just in a flare. Depending on the tin that you're using, if you're afraid it's going to stick, you can always line it with some parchment paper. It's going to make no problem to your dough. So you'll see our little seam to the bottom. And simply go straight in to our tin. As we come back to our focaccia, again, just walk into your fingers through the dough. And again, you're not trying to put your fingers through it. Just simply walk them straight through and the dough will naturally stretch itself out. So we're just going to take our tray. My trays are probably slightly bigger than yours, but that's all we need. So just take a nice generous drizzle of olive oil. And then you simply take your dough and straight onto the tray. Again, don't be shy. And don't worry if the dough, you can always reshape it when it, once it's actually on the tray. See all those lovely little dimples, you can see where the oil's collecting. And that's exactly what we want. And really, when it comes to your toppings, your flavour combination, anything you absolutely like, whatever your per personal preference is, whatever you got in the cupboard. Um, so we're just going to take a little bit of a little bit of broccoli, 
some cherry tomatoes. Again, don't be afraid to kind of push the toppings in and a little bit of red onion as well. And don't be shy when it comes to your toppings because you think you've got loads, but then as the dough, because we're going to let it prove again, as it proves out, it sometimes can lose a look, look a little sparse. So be nice and generous. One last drizzle of olive oil. Really generous. And again, just forcing those toppings in. So now we've got our focaccia. We've got our beautiful white tin proving away. And we've got some perfectly formed little burger buns. We're gonna to top each one of them with some seeds. To make them stick, take a little damp cloth, and all you do, into the damp cloth, and straight into your seeds. So you get beautifully, and kind of the damp cloth kind of makes it act like glue, makes it stick. We've brought all this together just out of 1,500 grams of flour. Um, of course, you can just work away with 500 grams, make one little loaf, but for the exact same amount of effort, you could have a focaccia proving, your loaf tin growing in beautifully in its tin, and some beautiful burger buns. And what did it take? 15 seconds in kneading and a little bit of shaping. Um, absolutely no reason why not to give this a go at home. So yeah, so our doughs have had about 45, 50 minutes. So you can see our, our loaf tin has grown beautifully right to the top of the tin. When it comes to proving your bread, only ever prove it 80%. The idea is the last 20 will come in the oven, so it's called the oven spring. It's got a nice little bounce to it, no fear of it collapsing, but that's exactly what we want. The idea is as it hits the heat, it's gonna jump. Again, our focaccia is good to go, and you can see how it starts to spread out, even though I had loads and loads of toppings on. We're gonna to give it one final drizzle of olive oil, and then we're gonna finish it with a little bit of sea salt. We only apply it to just before it goes in the oven because the idea is we don't want the salt to dissolve. So when you eat into it later on, it's got that lovely salty, crunchy bite to it. Our little burger buns are ready to go. Perfect size. Exactly what we want. So when it comes to baking your breads, again, don't be afraid to turn that oven temperature up. You want at least 230 degrees. We all cook everything at 180. We need that high temperature. That's what bread wants. We want to keep that beautiful crust. And then with our yeasted breads, one thing we really need is some steam. A great way to create steam at home is when you preheat your oven, get a roasting tray, get it really red hot. And I've simply got some boiling water, and it's gonna pour that straight in, which is gonna release a lovely blast of steam into my oven, which is gonna help my dough rise. 